I want to speak to you today on overcoming insecurity. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13, this is the story of Jesus with his disciples, and he asks them what they think about him. It says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Now notice how they replied. Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Now notice what Jesus says. He replies, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. Verse 18, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. You'll be confident, invincible. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Authority. You want to have real authority? It comes from knowing who Jesus is, knowing who you are. And he says, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. You will have authority. You'll have, you'll have a strength in your life because you know who Jesus is and you know who you are. A couple of things that come out of here that I noticed today that I want to talk about in, 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 in talking about insecurity before we get to talking about what a secure person looks like is firstly, people will all have an opinion on who they think we are. Have you noticed that? They had an opinion on who they thought Jesus was and people will have an opinion about you. They will think about you in a certain way, but mostly it will be wrong. Most of the people were wrong. They thought he was Elijah. They thought he was Jeremiah. They thought he was one of the prophets. Some say, and, and this is what people always do. They always measure you against someone else. They measured him against Elijah, Jeremiah, John the Baptist. But Jesus was unique, wasn't he? So you can't live by what people think about you. Secondly, we must know who we are. Jesus asked them, who do people say that I am? That's a telling question. Knowing who Jesus is is one thing, but you need to know who you are. And if you don't know who he is, you won't know who you are. Third thing here, our true identity cannot be revealed to us by people. Don't look to people to tell you who you are. Jesus here does not let people determine who he is. Number four, the fourth thing that I see here, is our true identity comes when we know who Jesus is. Peter discovered who he was and what he was meant to do when he discovered who Jesus was. I am, Jesus once said, and then he said, you are, Peter. And when you know who Jesus is, then you discover who you are. And you also discover, when you get to know who Jesus is, you discover Jesus does not love you based on your performance. He loves you, no matter what. Isn't that wonderful? How many of you know the most secure person that ever lived was Jesus? And if we're going to learn about being secure, let's learn about him. What did he do? How did he behave? Let's read a passage and look at some qualities of a secure person. John chapter 13 and verse 2. Are you ready? It says, the evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. This is interesting. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. Very important phrase. So he got up from the meal. Notice it says, so. Because of this, he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing. That's a very important statement. His outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Those days, the, the dust would stick onto your feet and it'd be like muddy. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Insecure, worried about position. Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Now, now Simon goes overboard. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. 
Jesus answered, now this is very important, don't miss this. Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet, watch, their whole body is clean. He's talking about salvation here. He's saying if you've been saved and baptized, you are clean. But as you go out daily into the dirty world, you will get contaminated, but not all of you, your walk. So don't come to church feeling I'm a total failure. Come to church, confess your sin, and get your feet washed because he thinks you're clean. He says here, yeah, and you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. Imagine washing the feet of someone who's going to betray you. Talking about being secure. Amazing. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, title, role, position, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord, teacher, who have a position and a title and a role, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I've set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. So secure people behave a certain way. That's what Jesus did. Let's look at what a secure person does. Number one, secure person knows who they are in God. Jesus knew that he'd come from God and he was going to God. Do you know where you've come from? Do you know that God has birthed you, saved you, and destined you for amazing things? When you know who you are in him, your origins and your destiny, there's such a security that comes into your life. The next thing is this. Secure people don't live by outer pretenses. Did you notice that Jesus took off his outer garment? You need to think about this for a moment. The outer garment that Jesus had was purple. It was a wealthy, expensive product. The rich wore purple. It was a garment without seam. That means it was sewn in one piece. That's why they gambled for it at the foot of the cross. So what Jesus did is he took off his rich appearance, he took off his wealth and his outer pretenses, and he washed their feet. Too many of us live by outer pretenses, branded clothing. We've got to have a certain look or we feel inferior. The next thing is, Secure people don't, don't rebel or usurp authority. They don't try and take over because they're secure. They trust God. When King David was on his way to the throne, guess what happened? King Saul tried to push him down. Isn't that true? And when he goes, he sees King Saul in the cave. And King Saul is, the Bible says, relieving himself. We know it's number two. <laughs> number one can be done in the bush. But number two is in the cave. And David can kill him at that point, but he doesn't. When he can smell the smell of the leader's weakness, he doesn't resort. He doesn't resort to betrayal. How many of you at work or in the church smell the smell of the leader's weakness? It's the best way I can describe it. You think it's your right to usurp. No, it's not. David steps back. He says, I can't do it. Then there's another time when Saul is sleeping and they sneak down and they take something from the tent and they come up to the top of the mountain. There are times when you're younger and you're sharper than the leader and he's older and he's... And you think, oh, I need to get going with God. This leader's old and David doesn't do it. He becomes king. Secure people don't usurp authority. The next thing is they have peace despite troubles and storms. Secure people are not threatened by storms and troubles. Do you remember when the Apostle Paul was in the storm? In the book of Acts, chapter 27. He says, now I encourage you or exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God whose I am and whom also I serve. Can you see that security is tied up in identity? Some of you are worried about what's going on. You just need to know, I know who God is. I know who I am. I leave the rest to him.